Welcome. Welcome to Catholic Discovery 101, a program dedicated to sharing the Catholic faith that we love with all our friends and family in the Pocatello Chubbuck community. I'm Diane Nisita, parishioner, Holy Spirit Catholic community right here in Pocatello. And our guest today is Ms. Nancy Corgett, principal of Holy Spirit Catholic School. And as you can well imagine, our focus today is going to be on Catholic education in general, but specifically, what's going on on A Street here in Pocatello. Welcome, Nancy Corgett. Thank, Thank you for having me, thanks. Before we begin, what we always do is we start out with saying, how did you find your way to being principal oh of Holy Spirit? Catholic school? Well, um, I was very fortunate as a child to grow up in a very Catholic family, a German Irish Catholic family in Which Los Angeles. Which means church uh, on Sundays? Church on Sunday, the old Vatican II, the pre Vatican, the Latin Mass. Rules, regulations. Rules, regulations, and all those wonderful things. Fish on things. Fridays. Um, I, I'm saying this because yes. some people do not get what it means to be. Uh, Pre-Vatican to raise. Oh, okay, okay. It was um, it was very structured. It's changed, I think, for the best because it's more interactive and the, and there's more involvement with um, children and women and parishioners in general in, into the whole liturgy process. In addition to the educational process, so it's not so much we were told what to do back then, and now we have a. We, we feel that more we, we, we're able to reflect more, which is also what we bring to the school as more well. More participatory. But I have a fabulous Catholic education from first grade through 12th grade. Now, as an adult and then with my own um, working now with the, with the Holy Spirit Catholic School, realize the sacrifices that my parents made for us three children to go through Catholic because school. Because it certainly was not a free education, was it? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, we did have the nuns teaching us, and I had lovely nuns. They didn't wrap your knuckles or anything. So I, I think I had um, all three of us kids and everybody that I still know who went through that process, the alumni of, of the two schools that I went to in, in the San Fernando Valley in Sherman Oaks, um, a great foundation, a great base, not only academically, but morally and socially and spiritually which was the whole idea. So I, I know how blessed I was to grow up in a Catholic so family of Catholic education. You arrive at your principalship from a traditional Catholic education of your own. Absolutely, absolutely. When we moved up here to Pocatello, like I say, from California, um, I went through Idaho State University, got my teaching degree. Later on, I was one of those, I didn't get it till 1994. Called non-traditional Catholic. Non-traditional, okay, you know one of those circumstances. I was very lucky, again, to be able to go to a school um, as, as wonderful as Idaho State. And then I, I, got, I was hired um, 17 years ago to work at Holy Spirit Catholic School. Then it was St. Anthony School as a second grade teacher, and I was a second grade classroom teacher for 10 years, and then became principal just by happenstance, and I think I was ready, and the school was ready for me seven years ago. So I just completed my seventh year as principal, proud principal of Holy Spirit Catholic School. 10 years as grade two. Correct, which is sacramental preparation year. It's I think that's why I'm bringing that up. Tell us about what a second grade teacher is involved in. Well, in addition to all the other academics that we, of course, um, offer for the children, very high expectations of their academic standards as well as their religion standards. So that, that's the year where the children receive, they go through, it used to call it confession, now it's called first reconciliation, and then first communion, which is still called first communion, although first Eucharist or Eucharist or whatever you want to, you know, how that's changed. But that's a pivotal year for children. Mm -hmm. um, the church deems them old enough to make decisions, to know right from wrong, to know what the Mass is all about and celebrating the Eucharist. So it's a real pivotal year. I was super fortunate to be able to teach it to as many children as I have and to really get involved with that huge process as far as the church thinking these kids are no longer babies, they're kids. So yeah. they're, they're old enough to make those decisions that will help them out of the seven sacraments that, is, that are offered, they receive two in one year. Very exciting for the families and as a teacher and as a whole parish community. I love it. Yeah, okay. me too. <laughs> All right. Um, to navigate to the Holy Spirit Catholic 
I, I have to, I'm so used to saying Catholic community, I have to get used to saying Catholic school site. I go, Holy Spirit Catholic Community, hscc.org, and then when I get to that homepage, I clicked on education, and then Holy Spirit Catholic School mm -hmm. pops up. I'd like to talk about what's a, a, a talk, we'll structure our talk about okay. what's on the bar at the top. And the first thing that I noticed that was on the bar at the top is about us. About us. Do you, uh, can, can, is that a good place to start? Because okay, sure. it's this mission and philosophy of the Catholic school education. There's an accreditation blurb right on your home page. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed some other things. How about we start with mission and philosophy? Well, we are part of the Western Catholic Education Association and the NWEA, which is all, the, there's 13 uh, elementary schools in the state of Idaho and we're kind of out in our own little neck of the woods here there's four in this region and so Ca Holy Spirit Catholic School is like the only one for miles and miles and miles but we all are in our diocese and our superintendent are in Boise but we all have the same goal as far as educating children spiritually emotionally academically and physically of course too so when we talk about us here in Pocatello um, it, our, it's our staff and our families, huge family involvement, critical to have the families involved in, in the education. They're the first educators of their children. I was thinking about that when you were talking about teaching second grade. Mm -hmm. I imagine the parents are pulled in, aren't they? Absolutely. And that's one of the successes, I think, of our school is our, is our parental involvement. When we have parent-teacher conferences, it's 100% all those parents come in, and we have constant communication with them. Because, it, it, you know, you, as, as I used to like to say in second grade, I'm their only second grade teacher. There's no do-overs. You have to do it right the first time. No, wait a second. Are you a second grade teacher still? No, I'm not. But my I heart is still in the classroom. Went, uh, okay. My heart is still in the classroom. I, well, I know some principals. But it's just so important for them to get every year what they need to move on to the next year. And then, you know, build that character and build that self-confidence, but build the academics behind what they need to do to, to, to do well as human beings and citizens yeah. and, and good people and yeah. productive people. That's our goal, okay. get them ready for high school and off to college. Okay, and that would be, we could say it, because I promised we would be talking generally about Catholic school education okay. in uh, the diocese, so that would be, that would apply generally as well. I believe so, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So um, let's talk about accreditation. I know this is, this is a really exciting part for you. Well, um, the state of Idaho, and I'm not quite sure of the timeline, but they discontinued accreditation for elementary schools. Hold it. The state, let's say that again, the state of it, Idaho discontinued accreditation for elementary schools. They do it for our high schools and of course the universities and colleges, but... Is that a funding? issue? I, I couldn't tell you. I don't know because okay. I've been in the Catholic system long enough to know that when they con canceled it, we continued. And um, we, re we are accredited. We're the only accredited kindergarten through eighth grade school in Bannock County because it is demanded of us, it is required of us. It's a huge self-reflection and a self-study. You, you might talk just a little bit about what does it mean to be accredited? Um, we. Well, basically, it's a self-study. What we do well, what our strengths are, and what our weaknesses are, and where we need to improve, all for the sake of, of, of the children, of course, but also for our, our community. I mean, we have Catholics, of course, but we also have non-Catholics in our, in our, at our school. So we just need to be the best situation and the best academic institution we can be. And the, the, the accreditation process, it, it, you start, like we're in year three of the second phase of what we're doing. We, we receive premier accreditation. We have the self-study. We bring the parents in. We bring the, the, the pastoral um, associates in. We bring community people in. Um, it, it was, we started with surveys. Our parents, our students had surveys. Our staff had surveys. We found out what we needed to work on as far as um, academically. For example, now in the next six years, we received the full accreditation. We were called the, the um, um, 
poster child for Idaho. We were just, we, we rocked it out. But anyway, <laughs> we're very proud of that. So that's where we go by premier accreditation. But and, we and decided says, that our problem, we, we needed to focus as a school on our writing process because our math was fine and our language needed that help and our spe specifically the writing process. So that's what we work on every year in addition to keeping everything else, you know, improving. Um, and we decided that as a staff, we came up with um, s student, they, well, they call, we call them the SLEs. They're the school-wide learning expectations that we have here. And we put the an acronym together of F-A-I-T-H, FAITH. And I think you need to talk about that because... This is who we are. Yes, that's why. <laughs> okay, let's start with F as in... Okay, this is um, students, this is what we want the students to, when they leave us, we want them to have these qualities. We want them to be faith-filled Christians who display academic excellence, exhibit integrity, take responsibility, and help others. So we put these, and then underneath there's a little sub sections of it, you know, but mostly when we talk to kids about faith, they can rattle off faith-filled Christians who, you know, a, who display academic excellence and exhibit integrity. And then you go, well, how, what's integrity? Eight-year-old, what's integrity? And they can tell you what it all means and what we're trying to do with them to make them better people, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, be compassionate and be tolerant and, and be service-oriented and give back to the blessings that God has given all of us, you know, give back to the community, give back to their families, and work hard at what they do. Be good people. We want them to be productive, good people. I um, taught for a decade in Japan, and it turned out that Muslim parents were sending their students to my Catholic school. It was called St. Moore mm -hmm. International School. And it was for the reasons that you just <laughs> mentioned. It was because yeah. Those parents were frightened of just turning their student, their their, their children loose, mm -hmm. in a community that wasn't necessarily focused in the way that they assumed our Catholic education uh, education would be focused. Well, there's been several studies, um, not not just by the Catholics, but you know the the quality of Catholic education throughout the decades have has been superlative you know kids also not only academically are well structured and the, and the expectations high and they we you, you you set high expectations those kids will meet it hmm. you expect them to be responsible for their own learning and they will do that granted we have the parents that also help kickstart and keep, you know so we work as a team I, I want to hear about that because that in public school education seems to be a big problem um, I hear complaints all the time that they can't even get parents in for parent-teachers meetings. So how do you involve parents? Uh, well, we have a parent-teacher group uh, that we call the, 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 was it PTO, PTC, P, PTC, sorry, I was thinking it's not PTA, but it's that kind of the version of the thing. They run, uh, they help us with fundraising. They help us with activities for the children. We have a very um, well thought out, well formed discipline policy that um, acknowledges the children for being good and doing you know, spontaneously wonderful things, as well as sometimes having minor infractions. Uh, tell me about the the acknowledgement of the good things. How does that work? Uh, we meet as a school every Monday morning. Um, we call it hall meeting, but actually we've grown to the point where we need to use the chapel because the hall's too small in our main building. And we we have a drawing, just little trinkety things for the kids to, to, to catch them being good and to acknowledge the fact that what they've done, maybe it's been picking up a pencil for their neighbor and giving it to them. You hmm. catch them at that moment and they, they're affirmed for doing the right thing. Wow. And not uh, and and sometimes you just say well done and that's good and sometimes you give them a little something. It, we we want them to intrinsically be thoughtful and compassionate and kind and courteous and respectful. But you have to as a for children you have to you know um, practice that and as adults we have to practice that and give them good <laughs> examples so they know what's going on. Hmm. But you know they're not perfect. They are kids. So then we have the minor discipline little slips, the yellow slips, and then. Very seldom do we have children that don't respond to a warning, you know. So at the end of every month, the parent, the parents' organization, puts together a school-wide activity. We go ice blocking as a school, or we have. Um, you go, it, I'm sorry, that was what? Ice blocking. I don't know what that is. Well, we go over to Ammon Park here in town. We used to go to Bartsfield until they built the softball, that beautiful softball diamond, 
and every child gets a big block of ice and they slide down the hill on the ice. Down the hill. They have a ball. We do it in September when it's hot. And um, so we do something to affirm that they've been good as a school. Uh, we might have movie day. We might have game board day. We, we do all those kind of things for those children who academically as well as behaviorally are nice kids. So we, we affirm <laughs> what they do and, and keep them on the right track because that's what it's all about. And mass? Do they go to mass? We do. Is this a school? We do. Every Wednesday morning we have, we have mass for the kids, kindergarten through eighth grade. And every week the different classes um, rotate the liturgy and they present the mass and they handle the readings and they they uh, bring up the gifts and they're the altar servers and all those kind of things. So every week a grade takes care of the liturgy of the mass and it's open to parishioners and families. It's at 8.30 on Wednesday mornings and then we follow that with adoration. I just have to say as a pre-Vatican II student I never did those things and I'm I still I, uh, it's wonderful, I would be frightened to bring up, to do the offering and to bring those things up because I don't know what to do. Is well, <laughs> and these kids, you know, they, they, what they call it, the ambo, the lectern or whatever uh, it is. And the words, they and know the, the words. They just get up there and it's very good public speaking practice for one thing. And mm -hmm. they become very comfortable with the liturgy. They become comfortable um, and they take pride in that, you know, being on the altar and helping with the, with the sacrament of, of the Eucharist. It, it's sensational. I, as a child, you couldn't have paid me enough to do that. But these kids, by the time they reach second, third, fourth grade, it's, it's something they look forward to and they cherish. They understand how special it is for them to do this. And, and but Share their what, what, I, what I hear is, is that the parents are very much involved in all of this. Absolutely. Did, uh, I think I read somewhere where you have a parent faith day. What is that? The faith day, we call the faith day activities are the ones that the parents do that would be the ice blocking. It's the once a month activity. We call it the faith day activity. It's and usually the last Friday of the and month. And the parents are in charge? Mm -hmm. Yes, and the teachers help set it up because we had a field day and we just do a variety of different things for the children. You know, this is lovely. Uh, I know. People are, people are saying, <laughs> they're saying, okay, Diane, but where, 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 what goes on academically? This is really beautiful, all of this, and it is, and I'm glad we started out with it. Well, our let's, let's talk curriculum. Oh, our academics. Well, now we have eighth grade. We, a couple of years ago, we started into the middle school concept when the District 25 uh, went middle school. We decided we would need to go middle school to be competitive, but also to keep our kids a couple more years longer before we sent them to high school. And since thinking we don't have probably a, that that middle school age group is important. It's very important, but it's also um, we're on one campus with three-year-old preschoolers all the way through eighth grade. So it's been a, a kind of a, a puzzle and a, and a dynamic that <laughs> we're trying very hard to. It's working now, but. Um, it's kind of interesting. Those kids kind of, that, that our elementary school kids, you see them grow on, growing up, well, they change. You know, middle school is a very difficult time for a child. You know, they're, they're, they're not babies anymore, but they're not adults. But you want them to, you know, and, and they're, they're starting to think about boys and girls and dating and, and being popular and all these things that they didn't really pay much attention to when they were younger. So they're, they're a different... They're lovely, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. We had um, our second eighth grade graduating class. Okay, so middle school includes seven Six, and seventh, eight. and eight. Oh, six, seven, six, seventh, and eight. And, eight. and okay. they run the same block system as they would if they were in the public system. Can you name the graduates, this year's graduates? Because oh, I sure. notice on your homepage, <laughs> you say, congratulations, eighth graders. We do, we had, um, it was a small class because we're still growing in that particular uh -huh. area. We had, uh, let's see, Katie Hiller and Landry Walker and Zabas Mendez, Zach Hearn, Calvin Howlett, Chance Weber, and who am I missing? Who's number seven? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you a pencil, and as you're talking, you will think of it. <laughs> oh, shame on me. You will think of it. There's a, the last one is always the one. Jorge. Jorge uh -oh. Santos. Sorry. 
I could see him. I couldn't. Yeah, Jorge Santos. Okay. So, so those are, those Jorge gets a double shout out here. <laughs> I know. Just, yeah, what a sweet kid. They're okay. a wonderful group of kids. So that's eighth grade, mm -hmm. and you do an eighth grade trip, too. I mean, back again to the fun things. Well, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade all take overnight trips. Fourth graders, um, and it's all curriculum based. Um, the fourth graders go to Boise because they're studying Idaho. And the fifth graders take a week, and this, this year uh, they're going to be in the fall. They go to Yellowstone and they spend time with the Department of Interior. And uh, My grandchildren did that yes. Yellowstone thing, it's and a, it's, oh, and it's they it's still talk about it, Miss Nancy. Yes. They certainly do. Fabulous. So that's their fifth grade trip. Sixth, seventh, and eighth, it kind of depends. Sometimes uh, we're going to reinstitute taking them to Portland to go to the coast as part of their science curriculum. Um, we take them to City of Rocks. They, I mean, it just kind of depends on, on the finances for one thing, but also um, what we can do and take these kids places. They do a lot of team building. They do a lot of short trips, but they all do um, overnight trips from fourth grade through. Wow. And we do f lots of field trips anyway. How do you manage the parental, um, how do you get parental permissions <laughs> to do that? Uh, we have a lot of parents that go with us as chaperones, but also see the parents are helping with the fundraising for the oh. children. And um, we try to minimize the fundraising efforts. You know, we have two large fundraising uh, w um, well, what we sell like cookie dough, we have a fall fundraiser, and then our, our auction, our dinner auction, which is the major fundraiser for the school that helps. Uh, where, where I, I, tell us about the, the major fundraiser. Well, it, it's a it, lot it, of what fun. What month is that? Um, we, we used to do it during National Catholic Schools Week, which was the end of January. Mm -hmm. And this year we're kind of mixing it up, and we're going to have it in November. And um, Phil Meter, courtesy Ford, they're so lovely. They give us their... Facility. Say their names again. They Bill Meter, Tracy Ford. It's fabulous, and um, um, we we've been very fortunate to have a good relate working relationship with them. So that's the that's the venue, and we have a silent auction, and people donate. The community donates wonderful gifts for us to raffle off silently, as well as the live auction, and then we have dinner, of course, and dancing. Um, this year our theme is Wizard of Oz. But we've done the Pirates of the Caribbean, and we did a 70s theme, and we've done Western. And it's just a, a kickback time, a lot of fun for the adults. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a party for the adults, and um, it's a, our major fundraiser. Where does the uh, results of the fundraising go primarily? How does that work? Well, some of it goes into the operating cost of the school and others we have what we call a call to heart if we've got something specifically we need for example technology is what yes. we're going to be working on this year we're trying to upgrade our tech technology um, and our systems um, one year we did a we, last year it was for safety we had safety upgrades that we needed to improve upon um, curric whatever, whatever it is the materials and then we have, that's a special funding that goes just for that one particular um, focus, whatever it is, we decide as a staff. My staff is absolutely sensational. The faculty and the people that work um, at our school, everybody's been there pretty much double digit or more <laughs> years. I've been there they 17 and I'm not the oldest one that's been there. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i the oldest, you know, biologically oldest member of almost of the, of the crew, but we've had teachers there for 15, 20 years, 24 years. Um, it's an amazingly um, diverse, eclectic, very creative group of people that we're fortunate to have. I love going to school every day. Whoa, and that's I, a wonderful I mean, thing to say. Know, it's, it's, it's true. We have, we have just a, um, a, well, the teachers put, came up with this, and we decide where we need to focus our efforts and our energies and our resources, and they're very dedicated, very smart group of, of ladies and gentlemen that work, and they, they, that's why our school's successful. It's it's the parents, it's the students, because they know their, their expectations are high and we demand a lot of them. But it comes, you know, it works. When they leave, they're ready for high school and they're ready for college or, mm. or wherever they want to go, trade school or whatever, but wherever they're going to be. And then our staff is su superlative. Uh, let's do a quick on um, family information because that's one of the buttons on the okay. top. I know you have n newsletters and 
summer programs oh. and student handbooks yes. and uniforms. Oh yes, we, we like the uniforms. <laughs> yeah. um, um, we do have, we have a child care program. Um, well, right now we're in the summer program and we have what we call the sensational summer program and it's, it's uh, for the kids not just at our school, it's, it's an open um, enrollment, but we have most of the kids that are with us through the year also need summer care. So we have, uh, the, we have a, a summer program for the children and then we open our doors at 7.30 for before school care and then after school care until six o'clock for those parents that need, and it's one-stop shopping, they don't have to take their child anywhere, they just bring them to school, we watch, we watch and take care of them and then they can be picked up after school when the parents, you know, are I off think work. People might be interested in that. How are they? How can they locate more information? Because we are running short of time. Oh, okay. What? 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 what d where on the website could they find this? It should be on the website under, under child care. If not, they can certainly call the school two three two five seven six three. Okay. And we can we can send. Is that Vacation Bible School? That's not. That's child care, and that's two separate things. Correct. Correct. But Vacation Bible School is coming up too in July, July. and we're of course it's going to be on our campus. We'll be working with uh, eight through eleven. I saw on the website. It is July eighth through the eleventh, and Tim Lin, Tim Lin is our new youth minister, and between the school and his resources and our staff, volunteer staff, we're going to have Vacation Bible School on our campus. Neat. We're very excited about Tim. He's new to the area. He brings a lot of. Uh, um, new ideas for our youth. He'll be working with the kids from uh, elementary school through high school. And uh, we're really pleased that he's, he's joined I our community. And I understand he's going to be a first time father yeah. very shortly. His, his beautiful wife, Jackie, is going to give birth uh, to their first child in August. So he's a busy, he's a busy guy. <laughs> We've got him moving and grooving. He has no idea, I don't think, how <laughs> that baby's going to change his life. But he's just lovely and we're really, really blessed to have him and thrilled to have him. Oh, that's lovely. You maybe, maybe we should, can have him on this show so he I can talk he for himself. I think you should. He's, okay. he's great. And we have a lot of parish support, too. Father John and Father Reginald, they're, they're, they back us 100%. And I think we have a good working relationship with the parish and the community and the school. I mean, we're all on the same page, and that's where we need to be. So we're growing. We're doing very well. I'm very obviously very proud of my school and everything about it. But Open enrollment. We've got uh, three more minutes and okay. uh, let's just talk about how people watching could be a part of this. Well we do have enrollment even though it's summer hours we're, we're there in the office off and on but we have um, we have small class sizes we have one except for kindergarten we have two kindergarten classrooms we have one grade one class per grade and we limit the size of the class so we have open enrollment and we, um, through preschool, three-year-olds, through eighth grade, we have openings, I believe in all the grades at this point, but some of them are rather close as far as being full because we, um, the, the, the little kids, the ratios, we want the ratios to, to work. So the, the, What does that mean, boys to girls? We, uh, we no, the, as far as student-teacher ratio. Oh, I see. First grade through eighth grade, we'd like the 22, 23, 24 tops. And then the little guys, the kindergartners, we'd like no more than 18 to 1 ratio. And then the 4-year-olds are 12 to 1, the 3-year-olds are 10 to 1. Because, you know, if you have too many kids and you can't meet all their needs and you can't differentiate like you need to for the older kids and the younger kids as well. But you have, you know, you have that range of academic, you know, ability. And, and you, we, we try very, very hard to make sure that every child gets what they need. You, um, I, I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of parents watching, uh, f f how to fund this? This would be on the website. So, yes, we okay. are tuition based, but I, I, ha oh, I have program. to tie it up here. Okay. If they want more information, they can call the school you bet. or go on to the website and see Correct. It. Correct. Okay, I have to stop, Nancy. Oh, and thank you so You're much welcome. for two things for telling us a little bit about your own personal vocational life and uh -huh. professional life and for helping us to understand what goes on at Holy Spirit Catholic School. Come by for a tour. I'd be happy to bring people around, show people what a great, wonderful organization we are and a great school. Thank you. And thank you for watching. On behalf of Father John, who is pastor of Holy Spirit Catholic mm -hmm. com Community, I want to say God bless us all, each and every one of us. Jesus, my God.